Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Luigi Fontana, the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center Royal Prince Alfred Clinic of the University of Sydney. Today I would like to discuss with you the results of an interesting paper we just published in Aging Biology, the most prestigious journal in the aging field. This paper shows that much of the hype around intermittent fasting that has uh, uh, overwhelmed the world in the last few years is most likely wrong. Let me tell you why. So intermittent fasting, including the 5-2 diet, entered public consciousness primarily uh, via a 2012 BBC documentary uh, Eat Fast and Live Longer that I was part of, I was featured uh, in this documentary followed by a 2013 book entitled The 5-2 Diet. The idea for this popular diet was based primarily on the results of animal studies which suggested that alternate day fasting could result not only in weight loss but in improvement of health span and lifespan as well. In that documentary, by the way, I have illustrated the findings of human studies uh, that I conducted when I was working at Washington University in, in St. Louis as a professor of medicine on the effects of daily calorie restriction with optimal nutrition and not fasting because there were no data about fasting at that time in humans. Uh, and uh, our data uh, that we publish in multiple journals uh, clearly showed that uh, calorie restriction without uh, malnutrition uh, markedly improves multiple markers of inflammation, insulin sensitivity, and many other metabolic and molecular factors that we know are essential to promote health and longevity. The problem is that calorie restriction is hard to maintain for most people because they don't have the instruments to uh, uh, control their calories and therefore fasting for just two days each week was proposed as an easy and effective shortcut uh, intervention to achieve the beneficial effects of daily calorie restriction but without the pain of counting calories and limiting food intake. In few words, uh, the promise of these and other books uh, on intermittent fasting and more recently of time-restricted feeding, the famous 16-8 diet, was that people could have the proverbial cake and hamburger and eat them for five days of the week while fasting for only two days per week. The problem is that the concept of the 5 to diet was not scientifically proven in humans. There were no data, no data from randomized clinical trial to support uh, these, uh, these, the, the beneficial effects uh, of this diet. It was just an idea, uh, an hypothesis, uh, and uh, it was uh, a wonderful marketing strategy, a strategy that worked very well. Uh, indeed, intermittent fasting was uh, suddenly being promoted, promoted as a way not just to lose excess weight, but uh, as a way uh, to improve metabolic health and as an anti-aging and longevity intervention. <clears throat> Some of the study participants uh, of the clinical trial that I uh, performed uh, at Washington University 
Among them, there were nurses, uh, doctors, lawyers, and even judges. Uh, they, 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 they loved the concept. Uh, they thought it was a wonderful idea because they still could enjoy all the fast food they wanted and sacrifice it for vegetables just two days of the week. Of course, being a practicing doctor and a, a curious scientist, uh, I'm always kind of skeptical on the promotion of unproven intervention, or at least unproven in humans. You know, animal data are interesting, but uh, rodents and mice and rats are not humans, as I've repeatedly uh, wrote uh, in my articles and uh, said in my videos. Uh, and therefore, I decided to run a proper randomized clinical trial in humans to test whether or not intermittent fasting had effects beyond weight loss. So, we recruited 50 overweight men and women. Uh, 41 of them were randomly divided into two groups uh, for six months. One group ate their typical Western diet for four or five days a week, and uh, f for two or three days they were fasting. Uh, precisely, if their BMI was uh, between 24 and 28, so they were slightly overweight, they were just fasting two non consecutive days per week, instead of if their, their BMI was between 28 and 35, therefore they were, you know, ob uh, obese, they were fasting three non consecutive days per week. Uh, at the end of the six months, uh, everybody continued fasting for another six months. So basically the group who uh, was already fasting, they, they, they did another six months of the people who were uh, controlled for the first six months, they started fasting. On the fasting days, our research volunteers uh, did not have to count calories because I design a, a, a fasting mimetic in, a mimicking diet uh, comprising uh, non-starchy raw or cooked vegetables dressed with two tablespoons of olive oil and either vinegar or lemon. And um, more or less this type of uh, vegetable fasting it is providing at the most 500 calories uh, and therefore it was very successful. The second group uh, acted as controls and uh, continued with their usual American diet. In this study, unlike many other studies, uh, we tested uh, uh, f for key markers of healthy aging, including inflammation, insulin sensitivity, mTOR activity. mTOR is a key protein uh, within our cells that is essential for controlling import important cell function, including cancer and aging. And uh, we also measure autophagy activation uh, through gene expression. Uh, autophagy is the process of clearing of misfolded toxic proteins and damaged mitochondria and dysfunctional organelles. After six months, uh, participants in the intermittent fasting group had lost about 8% of their body weight. Very remarkable. Uh, some of them, they lost up to 25 kilograms in six months. And 16% uh, on average of uh, body fat loss measured by DEXA. That is the gold standard to measure body fat. Not only that, but from a, a, a adipokine point of view, we measure serum leptin and high molecular weight adiponectin and as expected, we found a significant reduction in leptin, a significant increase in high molecular weight adiponectin. The bad part is that 
despite these remarkable uh, improvements in body composition and adipokine metabolism, we did not find any reduction in inflammation. So C-reactive protein and uh, multiple cytokines and chemokines were not changed. And uh, the, uh, we also we did, it, we did not see a clinical uh, meaningful improvement in glucose tolerance or insulin sensitivity in response to a glucose low to an OGTT test. Uh, and that's surprising because we have already published multiple papers showing that both calorie restriction, daily calorie restriction, and uh, intermittent and, and endurance exercise uh, with a similar eight percent weight loss results uh, result in major re- improvement in insulin sensitivity and a, a, an improvement in glucose tolerance. So this is what pretty surprising to me. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, these uh, participants, these research volunteers were successfully uh, successfully uh, in markedly reduce their body weight and body fat. We proved that, you know, in this study without any doubt. Uh, but uh, in terms of metabolic health, inflammation, insulin sensitivity, fasting did not work at all. We know that inflammation is the major determinant is one of the major determinants of aging in fact it's called inflammaging and uh, and this inflammation plays a key role in the development of cancer cardiovascular disease dementia and many other chronic diseases both inflammation and insulin resistance are two of the most important factors promoting accelerated aging. It's well known. Indeed, uh, we have clearly shown that compensatory hyperinsulinemia activates uh, key pro aging, pro cancer pathways like the PI3K, AKT, FOX, and TOR pathway. Uh, 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 we publish uh, these, these, uh, these results, these findings in several prestigious journals, including Science, Cell, Nature Review, Molecular Cell Biology, and others. So these findings demonstrate that weight loss by itself is not a guarantee of good health and also confirms, it confirms that the calorie is not a calorie from a metabolic point of view. What we eat matters, and and it matters a lot. Now, this is supporting other data, other papers published by Metina Mittendorfer, uh, other papers we published with Jeffrey Gordon on the importance of protein and uh, the gut microbiome in... uh, shaping the metabolic response to weight loss. So this paper just confirms and uh, other, other, other studies. Uh, uh, therefore, the mythical shortcut of uh, I fast two or even three days a week, I lose weight and then I'm healthier and I'm going to live a long, healthy life uh, just by... Uh, uh, fasting again two days and then eating five days of whatever I want is clearly wrong and not supported by scientific data but only by wishful thinking and uh, anecdotal evidence. This new data from a carefully conducted randomized clinical trial debunk the idea that if we fast a couple of days a week, we can get away with eating and drinking whatever we want. The quality of diet during uh, the normal days, during the, f- and the feasting days, uh, and how much uh, we exercise, uh, among many other factors, other interventions, uh, during the non-fasting days, uh, are deeply influencing the metabolic response to weight loss 
as I have already explained in many scientific articles, books and uh, YouTube videos. One interesting point of this paper is that in a subset of uh, participants we also collected colon mucosa biopsies and by doing uh, RNA sequencing uh, plus metabolomic, plasma metabolomics we found that excessive weight loss uh, induced by fasting uh, impairs some of uh, the anti-aging pathways and although these, is, these are preliminary data nonetheless they suggest that people react differently and that it is possible to overdo fasting and even calorie restriction as uh, Rafa de Cabo and others have shown in, uh, in rodents. In summary these new data show that fasting is not a magic bullet, uh, especially if you're interested in living a healthy and long life and not only in shedding few extra kilos. And they also show that the quality, the quality of our diet together with the quality and amount of exercise, cognitive training and other lifestyle interventions are essential uh, pieces of a complicated puzzle of healthy longevity. Now, uh, let me conclude by saying that if you want to understand more on these fascinating topics uh, and you want to make informed decisions about your health, uh, you might consider reading some of my review articles uh, uh, or if uh, they are too technical for you, you might consider reading, uh, for example, my book The Path to Longevity, that, by the way, has been recently translated into Chinese and Japanese. Uh, I'm very happy because uh, my publisher told me recently that the Chinese translation is doing very well. Uh, we sold more than 50,000 copies in less than six months in China. And the Japanese translation is doing also very well. Uh, it was launched only three, four weeks ago and we already sold 3,000 copies so the publisher is uh, uh, reprinting uh, the book very, very rapidly. Uh, and uh, finally, I just want to tell you that uh, on February 1st, my new uh, practical book entitled The Manual of Longevity and Wellbeing uh, is going to be available uh, uh, in the bookstores and online. Uh, this book has been compiled along with many illustrations uh, to provide the readers with the practical tools, tools to implement the concepts uh, that I have outlined uh, in, in this article and, and in, in earlier books. Uh, I decided to write this book because my patients, students and followers uh, often express their desire to understand not only the uh, technical concept but also practically what they should eat and how they should use ingredients to create healthy and tasty recipes and also what type of exercises and meditative techniques they should implement to boost their physical, mental emotional and spiritual health and therefore I hope th that this book will help satisfy some of these requests. So thank you for being curious and as always thank you for listening. Uh, this is uh, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Professor Luigi Fontana, the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and of the Longevity Program of the University of Sydney and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney, Australia.